Hello viewers, good morning, welcome to our channel Amma Public School and I am Ajay Dath with today's biology class and in the previous class we have finished the chat, we have finished the concept we have explained the concept regarding the functioning of your kidney that is how urine is going to be formed in the urine and all those things and in today's class we are going to deal with the last part of the chapter as well as this concept that is renal calculi or kidney stone kidney stone or renal calculi is also called as nephrolithesis this is the condition where there is formation of a calculi calculi means a stone or a small particle of stone so that is called as the kidney stone that is that situation is called as kidney calculi so what are the causes for this renal calculi you are all familiar with the kidney stone so there is no addition of any stones into your kidney but there is formation of a calculi formation of a calculi or calculus calculus is singular and calculi is plural okay so there is formation of tiny stones into your urinary tract or into your kidney so that situation is known as renal calculi so what are the main causes for this renal calculi excess deposition of calcium oxalate rich food stuffs the so excess uh, deposition of calcium oxalate and that is due to excess consumption of calcium oxalate rich foods so whenever you suffer with a renal calculi you to you go to a physician or urologist and there he suggest you not to consume some some food items it may be like spinach it may be like tomatoes cashew nuts and all those stuffs because they are rich in calcium oxalate and the rich the, they being very rich in calcium oxalate they can risk they can once again cause you the deposition so they ask you to avoid the consumption of these calcium oxalate rich food materials so apart from that it uh, some of the studies also it may be also due to the family heredity that is passing the information the passing of the this this is from one generation to other generation but all that is not proved very, very clearly but this may also be one of the reason this may also be one of the reason it is not a disease but it is a disorder okay malfunctioning of the kidney is also another reason for the formation of calculi and other direct and indirect causes are also there like uh, if you are not consuming proper quantity of water or your kidney is not excreting proper amount of uric acid or excess deposition of uric acid so these are all the different causes for the kidney stone formation or or the renal calculi or the renal calculi so the question arises where does this formation takes place so this formation initially takes place in the bean shaped structures that is your kidney bean shaped structures that is your kidney so in the kidney this formation of the calculi takes place and it is usually painless during such conditions where there is formation of the calculi and once the calculi is formed it must pass through the ureter it is passing through the ureter that is a connecting tube which you have already learned in the structure of kidney so in the in the to the urinary bladder in some rare situations so the, the size also matters here the size of the calculi is also matter here and that calculi may stuck into the ureters and that would cause a severe pain a severe uh, acute pain in your abdomen that is the indication of the, the formation of renal calculi when you are suffering with the uh, abdominal pains usually so that is a very severe sort of pain so when it is formed in the kidney it is usually painless but when it is passing through the ureters it could cause some sort of infections and that would lead to the severe pain and apart from that it would also deposit in the temporary storage structure called as the urinary bladder called as the urinary bladder and when there is form when there is formation well, sorry when there is deposition of such uh, this one uh, the calculus or calculi so what is happening there if they are smaller in sizes usually they are passed with the urine they are just passed out or they are eliminated with the urine but the size of the calculus 
is more so in that situation you would suffer a lot quite a lot with the severe pains and when you visit a physician he will just ask you to undergo some scanning where he will all the calculus or uh, uh, the situation of renal calculus and all those things and then if the size of the uh, stone or calculus is small it just uh, will give you some medications and using those medications you can just dissolve that calculus those, those drugs will dissolve all the stones or the deposition of this calcium oxalate and uric acid but in some situations where the size of the calculus is larger in such situations you need to undergo a surgical method of removal of renal calculi surgical method of renal calculi this is a very brief uh, note on the kidney stone and now moving to the last part that is kidney failure or renal failure renal failure so what is this renal failure so why is it happening the causes for renal failure are several we cannot just say why well, there is one accurate reason for the cause of the kidney failure or renal failure it may be genetic one it may be due to diabetes it may be high due to high blood pressure a set of uh, causes for the renal failure causes for the renal failure we are not focusing much on renal failure but we are discussing about the remedy when renal, renal failure takes place what, what, what is the remedy if our kidneys fail so usually as I have already said to you that we are having a pair of kidneys that is we are having two kidneys on the right and the other one is left so usually what is happening is if one of the kidneys fail to work that is if one of the kidney is not working properly or it has completely stopped filtering the blood then what happens there is pressure on other kidney there is pressure on other kidney so sometimes what is happening if one kidney is non-functional the other kidney would take its function and perform the activity of filtration of blood but usually what is happening there is a pressure on the other kidney because previously two kidneys were working now one of the kidney has stopped working and only one kidney is functional now and due to that there is a high pressure on the kidney and usually a person who is suffering with one kidney failure is uh, is susceptible to uh, the other kidney failure also usually because of the pressure because of the pressure but it differs from patient to patient so this is what is happening so when the both kidneys stop working or when they are not functioning properly so in such situations we need to undergo a artificial method of filtration of blood that is using the machine or instrument called as dialyzer and that procedure of filtration of blood by artificial methods is known as dialysis is known as dialysis so you are familiar with the word dialysis but now here we will understand what actually happens in the dialysis process what actually happens in the dialysis process so every hospital has this this instruments because of the increased rate of kidney failure uh, problems nowadays so there we are having a setup so where the patient needs to rush to the hospital every three to four days in order to get rid of all this nitrogenous waste which his body is producing if not the, that would lead to uh, toxicity and ultimately the death of the individual may take place or uh, the multiple organ failure may also take place because of excess because of the uh, deposition of excess toxicants within the body because we are not having any system to remove all this waste out of the body so we are having a system to remove the undigested food food from the body but we are not having a system for removing the waste generated or nitrogenous waste generated within the body so dialysis so before understanding dialysis we need to understand what are what is the thing happening in the dialysis before understanding what are what happens actually in dialysis we will first we will first recall the process of urine formation so in process of urine formation we already know about ultra filtration 
अल्ट्रा फिल्ट्रेशन देन सेलेक्टिव रीअब्सॉर्बन देन द लास्ट वन इज ट्यूलर सेक्रीशन ट्यूलर सेक्रीशन सो अल्ट्रा फिल्ट्रेशन वी आर नोइंग वॉट हेपन्स द अल्ट्रा फिल्ट्रेशन सेलेक्टिव रीअब्सॉर्बन वॉट आर दिंग्स इन द सेकेंड प्रोसेस वी नो and third process is tubular secretion we know so all this process together make or they they form the urine in our body in urine in our body but in dialysis what is happening is they are only having the reabsorption process they are having the reabsorption process where essential materials retain in the blood whereas the non essential material they are just eliminated out of the machine or instrument called as the dialyzer dialyzer so let us know what is actually happening in the dialysis process so once a per person suffering with a renal failure goes to a hospital or medical uh, facilities or okay? there so what happens there he will just go to a doctor or physician and he is suffering with a kidney failure so they uh, go with the uh, procedure called as dialysis so first and foremost thing they are doing in the dialysis process is they just make the patient to sit and when the patient sits over there so they just extract the blood they extract the blood from the artery of the individual they just extract the blood out of the artery of the individual and that blood is being pumped or sent to the dialyzer machine that that uh, that uh, the blood from the artery is sent to the dialyzer machine because the blood is flowing through pressure so it is sent to the dialyzer there so before it enters into dialyzer it is first cooled the blood is cooled it is not hot but the blood is warm we are all homeothermic animals so our blood will be usually warmer so uh, so the blood is first cooled because it is entering by instrument so it, it, it the temperature may cause some or the other disturbance so in order to avoid those disturbances so we will so first cool the blood and once the blood is completely cooled we add a anti coagulant to it anti anti coagulant which is that anti coagulant heparin is the anti coagulant which we are going to add into the blood so what is the role of this anti coagulant so blood is actually having the coagulating agents the blood is actually having the coagulating agents so what is the role of this coagulating agents so when the blood is exposed to the atmosphere there is formation of lumps solid semi solid particles lumps so that is the nature of the blood that is the nature of the blood when you just take a blood into the syringe when you suck in the blood into the syringe and leave it there uh, undisturbed for few minutes so you can find that after one or two hour there is formation of lumps into that blood there is formation of lumps into that blood that is coagulant there the, are the coagulants which are going to form the lumps into the blood so but in this dialysis machine or instrument we cannot let this blood to form lumps so in order to prevent the formation of lumps or clots in the blood so we are going to add anti coagulants when you add this anti coagulant or heparin to the blood there will not be any lumps because of the anti coagulant factor heparin so first you just need to remember this one that's it okay first the patient blood is sucked through artery that is cooled and once it is cooled there is addition of anti coagulant then when there is this addition of anti coagulant the blood is sent to the instrument dialyzer so dialyzer has uh, many partitions or uh, many uh, uh, tubular structures so many partitions suppose if this is the dialysis machine so we are having many partitions here and when you are having many partitions here so these partitions are semi permeable semi permeable so when they are semi permeable the other compartment of the dialyzer is added with a solution called as 
the dialyzing solution or diazolate it is called as dialyzing solution or diazolate so what is the component of this diazolate the component of the diazolate is as follows so it is having sugars right it is having some salts of course the water etc but it does not nitrogenous waste it is not having any nitrogenous waste so it is it will not be there in the it will not be there in the dialyzing solution so in the first part the blood is entering and these two compartments are separated by a semi permeable membrane and in second compartment we are having diazolate which is rich in sugar salt sugar salts salts water etc so what is happening is the what the, the solution which is rich in this sugar salt what is added to the second compartment so when both these things are happening it is separated by semi permeable membrane so you already have studied about the diffusion and osmosis diffusion and osmosis you already studied so this diazolate is of the same concentration of that of our blood it is of same concentration of that of our blood that means whatever normal amount of sugar we are having in our blood the same amount of sugar we are having in the diazolate salts also same the water contents are also same so what is happening the water content is the plasma and all those things they are all same then it also consists consists of many dissolved so what is happening is when this diazolate is added into the second compartment there is movement of molecules from region of higher concentration to region of lower concentration so what is happening in this is this method is the blood which is rich in sugar salt water nitrogenous waste and all those things in the first compartment then the solution which is rich in only sugar salt water and all those essential materials in the second compartment so when both the blood and the dialyzing solution are in isostone iso isotonic state that is isotonic solutions that is both are of same concentration when there is both when the both solutions are of same concentration there is no movement of particles from either the, the region uh, higher or region to the lower because they are both of same concentration but the blood consists of nitrogenous waste the blood consists of nitrogenous waste but the dialyzing solution does not contain any nitrogenous waste so the concentration of nitrogenous waste is greater in blood but it is not available in the diazolate so what is happening so all the nitrogenous waste from the blood will go to the second compartment which is rich in the uh, water salt sugar and all those things but none of the sugar salt from the blood will travel because both are of same concentration when both are of same concentration you already you know the nature of isotonic solutions there is no movement of molecules at all no movement of molecules at all so when the diazolate and the blood are added to the compartment because of the isotonic nature of the blood and diazolate so such materials will not move here and there whereas the blood which is rich in nitrogenous material is only going to pass to the diazolate solution and which is later on collected which is later on collected then after this process that is movement of molecules from region of higher concentration to lower concentration blood and the diazolate sugar sugar same concentration no movement so we require sugar of course so salts same water same but blood nitrogenous waste diazolate no nitrogenous waste so what is happening the nitrogenous waste from the blood will travel to the diazolate and this diazolate is separated out now which is rich in nitrogenous waste that is eliminated out of the dialyzer instrument and after all this procedure of movement of molecules so the blood is now warm that is it is brought back to normal temperature that is it is not heated it is just exposed to the there it will gain its natural temperature natural temperature so after gaining uh, the temperature that is when the blood becomes warm so what is happening 
they are once again pumped into the vein of the individual suffering with the kidney failure. Blood is sucked through artery, pumped into vein, pumped into vein because that blood which is free from nitrogenous waste must be sent to heart and from heart that blood which is free from nitrogenous waste will be pumped to various parts of the body along with the oxygen, along with the oxygen. So what is happening in the next procedure? So the blood after filtration process or after dialysis process is warm to the normal temperatures and once it is normal, warm to the normal temperature there is addition of coagulant factor coagulants or coagulant factor that is called as anti-heparin that is anti-heparin that is a clotting factor and the clotting factor is added to the blood so we require the clotting nature of the blood so when the, it was actually normally the clotting nature of the blood was there but for this dialysis process we added anticoagulant factor then we underwent uh, we undergone this process of dialysis and after undergoing the process of dialysis we are once again taking back the blood taking back the, back the blood so we need to take care that the normal nature of the blood is maintained in our body so we do not want any anticoagulant factors to go into our body so what do we do we add a coagulating factor we add a coagulating factor that is anti-heparin to the blood and that blood is once again pumped back to our body that is a person who is suffering with the kidney failure so this is what is actually happening in the dialysis process so let me stress more once again on this then we will uh, finish off this concept so what is happening in the dialysis first the blood from the artery is being taken then it is cool then addition of anti coagulant after addition what is happening elimination of nitrogenous wastes after elimination of nitrogenous waste one warming blood then after warming the blood addition of coagulants then after addition of coagulants the blood is pumped into body through vein so this is what is happening in the dialysis process the blood is taken from the artery it is cooled anticoagulant is added elimination of nitrogenous phase takes place then once again blood is brought back to its normal temperature when the blood is brought back to its normal temperature addition of coagulants takes place to bring back to the normal nature of the blood then after addition of coagulants it is once again sent to the vein and from vein the blood is reaching to the heart you already know and from heart to various parts of the body this is what is happening in the, the dialysis process now stressing more on actually this is not needed but uh, you may be curious enough to know what happens in the dialysis instrument so in dialysis instrument we are having many compartments so suppose this compartment 1, 2, 3, 4 so in compartment it will be blood 2 it will be dialyzing solution 3 once again blood and 4 once again the dialyzing solution or in order to avoid confusion you can eliminate this one just for understanding so suppose this is the dialyzer so in this we are having 2 compartments so what is happening 1 it is filled with blood the second one is filled with the Dialyzate or dialyzing solution. So, this dialyzing solution is prepared in such a way that it matches the concentration of our blood. This dialyzing solution is prepared in such a way that it matches the concentration of the blood. But only one thing is not done that is, the concentration of nitrogenous base is 
not maintain where concentration of residual waste is not maintained the dialysis the dialysing solution also contains that is glucose sugar that is i already written about the glucose the salt and all those things so the dialysing solution contains contains glucose plasma dissolved salts okay and many more essential materials but is also having same same but with one more exception that is nitrogenous waste so when both these compartments are filled with the same thing the blood has extra material called as nitrogenous waste that is concentration of nitrogenous waste is more in case of blood and it is least in case of the dialyzing solution so what is happening the blood which is so which is rich in the glucose and the dialyzing solution is also rich in glucose so when both the concept the glucose concentration of glucose in blood as well as dialyzing solution is same that becomes isotonic solution solution so there is no movement of glucose from blood to uh, the dialysis solution no movement at all so plasma same concentration is maintained so there is no actual movement of plasma right some movement is going eliminated all the, uh, but not all uh, all the plasma is eliminated then salts some salts are required by the body and that salt is also maintained in the uh, the dialysing solution what is happening so there is no movement of salts also some salts also then nitrogenous waste the blood is rich in nitrogenous waste but the dialysing solution does not consisting does not consist of any nitrogenous waste so there is movement movement of nitrogenous waste from blood to dialysing solution because of higher concentration here and lower concentration here the nitrogenous waste from the blood moves to the dialysing solution and this dialysing solution is eliminated out or collected out so this is what is happening in the dialysis process so hope you have understood the today's concept so now we are ending the concept here only meet you with a new chapter in the next class thank you